All right, so I am Mrs. Osman. I know this is Mrs. Downey's online classroom, but I'm helping her out with some lessons because she um, she does have fifth graders in elementary. Um, so in order for you guys to get all the lessons, I'm helping her out. So today we're going over 107 unit cubes and volume. So our objective is that after this lesson, you're going to be able to say to yourself or to anybody else that I know how to find the volume of a right rectangular prism by packing it with small unit cubes. You will also be able to say that I can find the volume of a right rectangular prism with fraction length edges using volume formulas. And you should be able to say that you know how to model the volume of a right rectangular prism using unit cubes. Right now, that sounds like a whole bunch of words. It doesn't make any sense. So let's go ahead and teach the lesson so you know what we're talking about. So right now, I want you to write down a rectangular prism. And the definition of a rectangular prism is a three-dimensional shape with two bases that are identical rectangles. Here we go. All right, so this is, let me kind of highlight this. This is one of those rectangular bases. The other one would be over here, and that's going to be a rectangular base. I'm going to get rid of that back one, though, because I think it makes the rest of it. Okay, so that yellow is one of the rectangular bases. They have identical rectangles and there are four sides that are also rectangles. So here's side here's side one. Where'd that go? Here's side one, here's side two, side three would be sitting on the ground and side four would be back here kind of against the back wall. So that is a rectangular prism. Any questions about rectangular prisms? It doesn't it doesn't hurt to draw a picture if you can draw a rectangular prism, but it is a three-dimensional shape with two bases that are identical rectangles and four sides that are also rectangles. All right. We're now going to talk about volume. So the volume is all the space inside a three-dimensional shape. So when we had our shape here before, we have our shape. Volume is if you filled up this whole shape with stuff. You could fill it up with water, you could fill it up with marbles, you could fill it up with cubes. But the volume is all the space inside that box. And we measure that in cubic units. So if this rectangular prism was measured in inches, when we find the volume, it would be inches. cubed. Okay. If it was feet, it would be feet cubed. If it was meters, it would be meters cubed. Another way of writing it would be inches cubed. Okay, any questions about rectangular prism or volume? Just give me a smiley face or a frowny face if you have a question about volume or rectangular prism. Thank you very much for giving me some smiley faces. Thank you, thank you. All right, now we have a cube. And a cube is very much it is a rectangular prism. All right, thank you for the smiley faces. Okay, so now we have a cube, which is a rectangular prism, but it is a special rectangular prism. 
because all the sides are exactly the same. So it is like a perfect little square box. Okay, so a cube is still a rectangular prism, but it has all three sides the same measurement. Really more than three sides, but all of those sides are of equal measurement. So it's like eight squares all put together to make a box. Okay, so, and again, draw your pictures. A rectangular prism, it's just a little, I mean, it still could be a cube, but it's not all equal, whereas a cube has all equal sides. I draw with a pencil. Okay, we've got one more definition. And I hope you guys are writing these down. A unit cube is a rectangular prism that has measurements of one unit on all of the sides. So it's still just like a cube. But now let's say this is one foot, this is one foot, this is one foot, this is one foot. This is one foot, there's one foot. Every side equals one unit. So it could be one foot, it could be one inch, it could be one meter, but the measurement is just one. So it's called a unit cube because it's one unit. Any questions on those four definitions? I think they're all things we've seen before. We just wanna refresh. Christine, we can talk about that later. All right. Oh, you want to wait, Christine? You want to, you want to, do you still need time to write? Okay. I'll give everybody one more minute to write. And remember, if you don't get everything written down, you can always watch the recording later. And Maya, that's always a good idea too. You can take a picture, but the recording will be saved and it will be on Mrs. Downey's website so you can always watch the recordings later and I always think that's a great idea to watch it a second time because sometimes you're just too busy understanding it the first time so if you listen to it a second time you kind of get a little bit and then you can hear some other important things. Gabrielle you have your hand raised did you want to type a question? Oh, it doesn't look like a unit cube this time. It looks like a rectangular prism, but. Yes, Gabrielle, a cube has the same length on each side. But a unit cube, the measurement has to be one. A cube, the measurement could be six. So they could all have sides of six inches long, or they could all have sides of 20 inches long, but a unit cube can only be one inch, or one meter, or one foot, or one mile, but it can't be more than one. Does that make sense? That's a great question. I think that's a fantastic question, because a cube has equal sides. It has the same measurement, but it doesn't say what that measurement has to be. It could be any number but a unit cube has to be one. Perfect. All right, so I am sorry if you haven't finished writing the definitions down. We're gonna go ahead and move on, but like I said, you can watch it again, and all these definitions are in the lesson. I just copied them right out of the lesson. So now, look, we have a unit cube. Everything's one inch. One inch length, one inch width, one inch height. So we have a unit cube. It's also a cube, but it's specifically a unit cube. It's also a rectangular prism. It's a rectangular prism, it's a cube, but more specifically, it's a unit cube because each measurement is one inch. Okay, so, and if parents are watching this, this is way different from when I learned volume. 
But what they want you to do, and this is going to be on your homework, they want you to find the volume. And if I'm writing it, you should probably write it. Find the volume by packing by packing it. Yes, Gabrielle? Gabrielle, go ahead, type your question. Ishmael, I, let's keep those little jokes to the side, okay? Let's not talk about that right now. So let's find the volume by packing it with smaller cubes. So what they're saying is we've got this big box and they want us to use smaller little cubes to fill the box up and to help us find the volume. So Gabrielle, a rectangular prism if you think about the definition of a rectangle, the opposite sides have to be equal. So a square can be a rectangle, but a rectangle cannot be a square. So the definition of a rectangle just says the opposite sides have to be equal, and a square fits that definition. So a cube can be a rectangular prism, Okay, because the cube has opposite sides equal and then it has the other sides the same. So that's one of those things where the square can be a rectangle, but the rectangle can't be a square. Great question, Gabrielle. Love it. Okay. So this, okay, I'm going to go ahead and type really quickly the steps to find the volume by packing it with smaller cubes. Okay, so these are the steps. So step one, you want to determine the number of smaller cubes that will need to be packed along each side, okay? So we wanna figure out, and again, we haven't done an example yet, so this may seem really weird, but, but I really want you to write down the steps so that you've got them for later. When we do, this, when we need the steps, we've got them written down. So step one, determine the number of smaller cubes that will need to be packed along each side. Doesn't make sense yet, but that's okay. It's going to. For right now, just write it down. Step two, determine the total number the total number of smaller cubes that will fill the prism or cube. Step three, find the volume of the prism. Can you hear me now, Juan? Find the volume of the prism using the total number of cubes. Okay, just three steps. So go ahead. Go ahead and write those, oh, go ahead and write those steps down. Determine the number of smaller cubes that will need to be packed along each side. Step two, determine the total number of smaller cubes that will fill the prism. 
And step three, find the volume of the prism using the total number of cubes. You will need this for your homework. I've already looked at the homework for tonight and you're gonna want these steps to help you solve your homework. All right, give me a heart only if you need more time. Go ahead and put a heart in only if you need more time. There we go. Okay, okay, I'm going to give everybody more time. I don't need any more hearts. Perfect. Abby, go ahead. You got a question? Yeah, the homework's your assignment. Sorry. <laughs> I'm actually going to put the last slide um, is actually a copy of the top of your homework. Like I kind of took a screenshot of your ho of your assignment. Sorry. <coughs> so that that way we can kind of talk about your assignment before we go. Sorry, I talk about it like it's homework, but you're right. It's not homework. It's all homework. It's Everything's homework. This is homework. You're home working. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and move towards the next slide. So hopefully you've got most of these steps, but again, they're in your lesson. Okay, Christine, go ahead and run and get some more paper. I took about three pages of, of homework, of notes. I'm sorry. I took about three pages of notes, and I write kind of small. So you might want at least a couple pages more than that, just in case. I do recommend having a notebook, something that you can just flip the page over and start writing more on the next page, because we want to keep it all together so that when you do a DBA with Mrs. Downey, you can flip through your notebook and look up, you know, the steps or questions, that kind of stuff. So I do encourage you to keep everything in a binder or a notebook so that way it's all there and you don't have to worry about losing it. Okay, so when we talk about packing, when we talk about packing a box, this is kind of what they're talking about. On the, on the left side here, we have a big box for fish food. But then on the right, you can see that they filled that box with smaller boxes. This box actually has eight little boxes inside. So when they talk about packing the box, they're talking about trying to fit littler boxes inside the big box. Okay, so this, it's packing a box, exactly. So <clears throat> this is kind of visually what they're talking about when they talk about packing the box. You're filling it with smaller boxes, and those smaller boxes are all exactly the same size, and they need to fill the box completely. There needs to be no gaps in between those boxes. <coughs> okay, so I don't, if you want to add that to your notes, you can. It's not something you necessarily need. I just wanted you to understand what it meant when they talked about packing the box. Uh, 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and get to our first example. <clears throat> so we have a rectangular prism that has edges two and a half, two, and one and a half. So I'm going to draw the box. So we've got two. one and a half and two and a half. Okay, so those are our edges, two and a half, two and one and a half. How many small cubes with sides of one half inch do you need to fill the box? So that's question number one. Question number two, what is the volume? So let's just focus on question number one right now. How many of those one half cubes fit into the box? So we are going to start <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to start by figuring out Okay, wait a second guy. No, no answers yet. No answers yet. We are going to take the first number, let's start with two and a half, and we're going to divide, Ishmael, hun, you'll, you'll have to watch the recording, okay? We're going to, we're going over this example, the rectangular prism has edges two and a half, two, and one and a half. How many cubes with side lengths of one half inch need, are needed to fill the box? So, what we're going to do first is take all of the sides one at a time okay one at a time and we're going to divide it by one half okay we're going to do each one divided by one half All right, so we want to do these one at a time because I don't want to confuse anybody. And some of this is a review of what you just learned with Mrs. Downey on Monday. So how do we divide fractions? And how do we divide mixed numbers and fractions? Who can tell me how we divide 2 and a half divided by 1 half? What do we need to do to divide? Let's just work at the first one right now. 2 and a half divided by Perfect, Juan. We need to make the two and a half an improper fraction. So what would two and a half be as an improper fraction? Five over two, Melissa. Very good. So we have five over two divided by one half. Five over two divided by one half. Let me know if the voice keeps having a problem, guys. So what do we do next? Instead of dividing by a half, what do we need to change? I see some answers, but I want to get all the steps first. Five and a half divided by, we flip it. Very good. We flip and multiply. And do you remember what, what it's called when you flip a fraction over? Does anyone remember that vocab word? What happens when we flip one half? Reciprocal. Good job. And then we just multiply the tops together and the bottoms together. And somebody already gave me the answer of five. Perfect. So right now, we know that this two and a half needs five of these half inch cubes to fill that length, 
just that side, not the whole box, but just that one side needs five half inch cubes. So now let's take a second and do the next one. I have a whole number. How do I divide a whole number by a fraction? Wait a second, what am I gonna do? Two over one, good job, Ariel. Two over one divided by one half. You guys learned a lot on Monday, excellent. So we've got two over one, and you guys told me to multiply by the reciprocal. So two times two is four, one times one is one. That simplifies to four. So that means I need four boxes to fill that two inches. You guys are doing excellent. I thought this was going to be harder. Oh, what's one and a half as an improper fraction? Three over two. Three over two. Fantastic, Abby. Oh, everybody. Good job. So we've got, whoops. We got three over two times that reciprocal again. Oh, Gabby, I'm sorry. Gabby, where did we lose you? Gabby, did you did you log in late or did you have you been here the whole time? Okay. So let's just start at the top with the two and a half divided by one half because they're asking us to figure out how many of these little boxes can fit inside that length. So that's why we're dividing by a half. So are you confused about why we're dividing? Or are you confused about the dividing fractions? Ishmael, if you could stop adding extra stuff in. Um, if you have a question, that's great. But I don't want all this extra stuff being typed in, OK? I, I made that very clear in the beginning. Gabby, are you confused about why we're dividing or are you confused about how to do the division? Okay, did you attend Mrs. Downey's Monday lesson? It should take about an hour, Laura. Okay, Gabby, okay. So let's go through this last one one more time. Instead of going back through all of them, Gabby, I'm going to go through this last this last example. I'm going to delete all the work and we're going to go through it slowly. And I would encourage you to go back and watch Mrs. Downey's Monday lesson again because this is something you definitely want to make sure you got it, got it and got it really good. So do you know, Gabby, how to make one and a half into an improper fraction? We are not allowed to multiply mixed numbers. We have to change them to improper fractions. So do you know how to change an impro a mixed number into an improper fraction? OK. 
Okay. So this, I'm going to put it up here. One and a half is considered a uh, mixed number because it has a whole number and a fraction, so it's mixed. In order to change a mixed number into an improper fraction, we multiply the bottom number times the big number, and then we add that answer to the top number. So we're going to say 2 times 1 equals 2, 2 plus 1 equals 3. And then the denominator actually stays the same. We don't change the denominator. It's frozen. It gets to stay. But we multiply 2 times 1 to get 2, 2 plus 1 to get 3. Perfect. And it's called an improper fraction because we don't like the top to be heavier than the bottom. We don't like the top to be bigger than the bottom. So that's the process of changing. So when we come down here, we change 1 and a half to 3 over 2. And then I didn't change the second part at all. It's still divided by 1 half. Now, we keep the first part the same. We change division to multiplication and we flip the second fraction. And that is called the reciprocal. Because dividing fractions can be very difficult, but multiplying fractions is very easy. And some really smart math guy or lady a long time ago figured out that if we multiplied by the reciprocal, it was the same as trying to divide by the original fraction. So because of that really smart man or woman, we can now flip and multiply instead of trying to figure out how to divide it. So three, when we multiply fractions, we multiply the tops. Three times two is six. And then we multiply the bottoms. Two times one is two. And then we want to simplify. And a fraction is just a fancy division problem. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. And I can fit. Very good, Ariel. Thank you. OK, so do we have any confusion on how we got 5, 4, or 3? All right. If you do, you can raise your hand or give me a frowny face. If not, let's stay silent so that the people who are confused can talk. So I'm going to move on because we're not done. We didn't do, we just set up the problem. We haven't even solved it yet. So hold on one second. Okay, so this kind of represents what we just figured out. We know that we have five cubes on one side, four cubes on the other side, and three cubes on the height, right? That's what we just figured out. And again, a, a prism changes, so the one I drew might be different than the one they drew. But this is what we just found out. We didn't fill the box. We just filled the side of the box. Okay, we didn't fill the box with the 5, 4, and the 3. We just kind of lined them up to form the sides. So in order to find out your first question, how many small cubes are needed to fill the box, we're going to multiply to find that answer. So we're going to multiply 5 times 4 times 3. <clears throat> multiply them all. So what is 5 times 4 times 3? Very good. It is 60. And if you need to break it down, you can do 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times 3 is 60. So if you need to break it down, you can, if that helps. I don't believe there's any calculators on the sixth grade math FSA, so you want to make sure that you can do this math without a calculator. If you use a calculator all year, and then you try to take the FSA without a calculator, 
you will not do very well. You've got to practice all year like you're taking the test, okay? So just keep that in mind. I can't stop from using a calculator, but if you want to be prepared for that end of year test, the FSA math, you need to practice with the tools that you're going to get on the test, which means no calculator. Okay, so the answer to the first question, 60 cubes are needed. Now the second part of the question says, what is the volume of the box? It's not the same, it's not 60. 60 is the number of cubes. Does anyone have an idea of how we would find the volume? Does anyone know how to find volume? What is the, the formula for volume? All right. Abby, go ahead and ask your question. Oh, you have the answer. Okay, you can give me your, you can try. Go ahead and give me the answer. I'm not sure that you have enough information to give the answer yet, but you can try. Oh, perfect. You had the answer for volume formula. You're right. It is length times width times height. Okay, length times width times height. So, in order to find the volume, we have two and a half inches times two inches times one and a half inches. Oh, I know. It's so confusing. They want you to pack the thing, and then you can't even use those numbers to find the volume. I'm not saying this is the best lesson ever, but your homework, you need to know how to pack and you need to know how to find the volume. So I had to show you both. But I agree, it'd be way easier to just find the volume in the beginning. So you've got part one, the number of cubes is 60. Now let's find the volume. And I think, nope, okay, sorry. Okay, so. We're going to find the volume by multiplying the length times the width times the height. And even though this says length, I don't like that there. That's not, it's not really the width. It's four cubes. It's three cubes. It's five cubes. It's not the same. So we have two and a half times two times one and a half. So take a second and test yourself. What are we going to do with the two and a half? What are we going to do with the two? What are we going to do with the one and a half? Don't do anything else after that. Just convert your fractions and your numbers to the right thing. So what did we get for two and a half? Five over two, very good. What about two? Two over one, what about one and a half? Three over two, Ariel, three for three, very good. Good job, Melissa. Any questions about how we got those three numbers? All right, so now, how do we multiply three fractions? What are we gonna do? We're gonna multiply all the tops together. Five times two, times three. Multiply them together. Very good. 
30. Excellent, Melissa. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 times 3 is 30. Now let's do the bottoms. 2 times 1 times 2. 4. Can we simplify 30 over 4? Because even though that is our answer, that is the volume, and it's going to be inches cubed <clears throat> 7. Juan, that's in the right direction. 7. Yes, Christine, I want it as a mixed number now. Graceland, good. Ariel, cool. The 28 is not correct, but the 1 half is good. So let's review it just quickly. We've got 30 divided by 4. 4 goes into 30. I see a lot of sevens, seven times. Four goes into 37 times. Four times seven is 28. And when you subtract 30 and 28, you get a remainder of two. So our original mixed number is going to be seven and two fourths. But a lot of you giving me your answers, no. That two fourths can be reduced. Juan, you're right, the lowest term. Abby, go ahead and give me your question. So everyone's telling me to reduce, and I can divide. Oh, hold on a second. So we can divide both sides by. Two. All right. So two divided by two is one. Four divided by two is two. So our final answer is going to be inches cubed. Seven and a half inches cubed. Perfect. We want the lowest terms. We want the simplest form. And this is our final answer. So it kind of stinks that we started with mixed numbers. We changed them to improper fractions. We get an improper fraction. We have to change it back to a mixed number. But that's how we finalize our answers in simplest form. So you guys did awesome. You guys really rocked that example. So let's do another one. Oh, I'm sorry. This is really tiny. But Brianna and her mom are selling candles and shipping them. It is a long process, Maya, and the problem with long process is that if we get tired and make a little mistake, somewhere in the middle, the whole answer is going to be wrong. So we want to make sure we stay sharp. That's okay, Ishmael. You're getting right back on real quick. You're not missing anything. Each candle is packed in a cube box with edge lengths of one-third feet. The candles are shipped in boxes with length three and a third feet the width three feet and the height two and two thirds feet. What is the maximum number of candle boxes that can be packed in the shipping box? And what is the volume of the shipping box? So we need to find the number of cubes that can fit So what was the first thing we did in that last example? We divided, whoops. What are we going to divide by in this example? What are we dividing by this time? One third. Very good because that, those are the little boxes going into the big box. You guys are excellent. Great job. Okay, so take a minute and work on your paper and tell yourself what you need to do for the three and one third divided by one third.
All right, anyone want to tell me how we set up that first problem? Three and one third divided by one third. Maya, go ahead. I want to know the next step. So what is three and one third? I don't want the answer. I want to know what the next step is. What do I do? There we go, Maya. 10 over 3 times 3 over 1. Very good. 10 over 3 times 3 over 1. Melissa, question or answer? Go ahead and type. Reciprocal. Very good. Thirty over three, which reduces to ten. That's okay, Maya. Thirty over three, which equals ten cubes. Melissa, question. Okay, okay. Your hand was raised, so I just want to make sure. All right, let's do the second one. 3 divided by 1 third. So take a second. Melissa, I'll let you answer it, but I want to I want to give everybody a second to write down their answer first so they can challenge themselves to see if they got it right. Christina, you're not getting it. Okay. Christina, while everybody's working on the second one, let's look at the top one. Do you understand how we went from 3 and 1 third to 10 over 3? Okay. Okay, so Christina, you see how we got that. Okay, and then instead of dividing, we multiply and we flip the second fraction to the reciprocal. I used to call it Okay, I used to call it K, F, C, because Christina, if you change division to multiplication, you've got to flip to the reciprocal in order to keep the equation balanced. If I multiply by the same number, then I've changed it. It's not going to equal the same amount. Let me... Melissa, oh, hold on one second, Melissa. Okay, let me explain KFC real quick. So keep the first fraction the same. Change division to multiplication and flip the reciprocal. I know it should be KCF, but KFC is easier to remember. <laughs> so that's that was my little trick to remember it keep flip change i need to keep the first one i need to flip the second one and i need to change division to multiplication okay now let's do some numbers that we already know the answers to so let's say we're doing this is a side note okay and i don't have a side piece of paper to use guys so i'm just going to do here i'll use this color okay so let's say we have 10 divided by two. We know that answer is five, right? Super simple. We're good with that. We all know that 10 divided by two is five, correct? Let's apply, and Christina, I really want to make sure you're paying attention to this, okay? Let's apply our fraction rules for this whole number example, okay? So let's change these whole numbers to fractions. So we're going to keep Melissa, question or answer? I don't want an answer yet, but if you have a question, you can type it. So if we keep the first one the same, 10 over 1, we change division to multiplication, and we flip the second fraction to the reciprocal. Maya, if you have a question, you can go ahead and type it. You do not need to raise your hand to ask a question. Christina, do you see how we've changed this same problem 
but we're using the rules of that we're learning. We're learning these new rules, this KFC rule. And when we do that, we're going to multiply 10 times 1 and get 10. We're going to multiply 1 times 2 and get 2. And we already know 10 divided by 2 is 5. Okay. Maya, I'll let you, I think I think Melissa is going to answer the three divided by one third. I just kind of wanted to go over this really quickly with Christina. Sorry. So does everybody see how the in order to keep the equation the same, in order to do that, we are just like I said, some old guy or some old lady a long time ago figured out, wow, instead of dividing, I can multiply by the reciprocal and then it's going to equal the same thing and they were like how cool is that we've just changed math rules as we know it and everyone applauded and it was like this it was like the super bowl of math when somebody figured this out it was awesome so what we need to do now is follow the math rules because if we don't obey the math rules we end up in math jail and that's nobody wants to be in math jail so the rule is you can divide or you can multiply by the reciprocal and the equation will still end up the same. Christina and anyone else that had questions like Christina, how does that does that make your brain a little bit happier? Does it make a little bit more sense why we do that? Christiana, I'm sorry Christiana. Okay, but does that make you happier, Christiana? Christi Am I saying it wrong? Okay. So, okay, perfect. So, I'm going to get rid of this now. This example is going to be gone. We're going to the 10 times 1 half, Gabby, or the 3 divided by 1 third? Okay, we're going to do that one right now. So let me get rid of the 10 divided by 1 half. And Melissa, you've been waiting very patiently. Can you tell me what 3 divided by 1 third would look like in the next step? I don't want to know the answer yet. I just want to know what the improper fraction and the second fraction are going to look like. Very good. It's like exactly the same thing. We've got, whoops, 3 over 1, because any whole number can be written as a fraction, times, and then 1 third, if you flip it, it's 3 over 1, 2. Maya, I'm going to let you do the last one, okay, because you both have been waiting very patiently. All right. So Melissa, go ahead, or anyone, but Melissa, go ahead and tell me what the next step is. What do we get when we do 3 over 1 times 3 over 1? Nine over 1. And we know 9 over 1 is the same as 9. Very good. Okay, Maya, your turn. Are you ready for the third fraction, 2 and 2 thirds? Go ahead and put it in there, Maya. Eight over three times three over one. And then what would be the next part, Maya? twenty four over three, and we know that twenty four over three equals eight. Very good. Yes, I, I the next we just need to find the volume, guys. So go ahead and find the volume. If you can't if you cannot stay, just log into the recording later and fast forward to the end. So remember, volume equals length times width times height. We have three and one third times two and 
times 3 times 2 and 2 thirds. Oh, sorry guys, I totally skipped that other step. Maya, thank you for reminding me. We need to find how many cubes. We're almost done. Oh, oh, she should have come in here. <laughs> okay, sorry about that, guys. Maya, thank you for reminding me. We need to find out how many cubes we need. And to do that, we're going to do 10 times 9 times 8 to find the total number of cubes we need. Juan, thank you. That's 720 cubes. To fill the box, we need 720 candle boxes. Perfect. Now let's find the total volume. You guys are excellent. You guys are doing fantastic. I have loved all the good questions that you've asked. You are, do, you are rock stars. You're doing amazing. So let's go ahead. <laughs> they were. So let's go ahead and change all of these mixed numbers. Now we already have them changed as mixed numbers. We don't really have to think about it again. We can just write them again. And I'm running out of space. This screen is so small. All right. So we have 10 times 3 times 8. 10 times 3 times 8. What do we get? And then we have 3 times 1 times 3. So I need a numerator answer and I need a denominator answer. Two hundred forty. No question mark. I want to see an exclamation point next to that, Maya. Good job. And nine is on the bottom. Excellent. There you go, Maya. <laughs> we want to have confidence in our answers. The exclamation point presents some confidence. Now, I would love it if I could take two forty over nine as your final answer, but I can't. It's not possible. I need you to change it for me. So without using a calculator, what is the mixed number? 240 over 9. Christine, it's 240 over 6. I mean, 240 over 9. 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so guys, I need to clear off some space. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come over to the top and clear off some space. Okay, we need to do some long division. Ooh, that's good. So we've got 240 divided by 9. 9 into 200, 9 into 24 is going to be 2. Nine into sixty is going to be six with a remainder of six. Graceland, question or answer? Go ahead and you can type either in the box. Answer, Graceland, go ahead. Whoops. 26 and 6 over 9. And Ariel, you reduced it even more. Graceland, perfect. 26 with 6 over 9. 26 and 6 over 9. And then you can reduce both of them by 3. And so we get 26 and 2 thirds feet cubed for your final volume answer. So you have 720 cubes can fit in the box, but the volume is 26 and 2 thirds feet cubed. 
Okay, and I know we need to get off. We've been on for an hour now. So your final thing is your module one project. You have an option one and an option two. I encourage you to do option one. Option two is with a partner. Um, so option one, here's your problem. You have a box with three and three-fourths feet, three feet and three and one-fourths feet, and you're trying to fit the one-fourths little boxes inside of it. You know exactly what to do. You just need to answer the questions. There are several questions to answer. I didn't copy the whole assignment, obviously. It's very similar. The steps are exactly the same, but there's going to be a couple questions about, you know, what is volume? What does volume represent? We talked about that earlier in the chat, earlier in this lesson. What is, what is volume? And we drew a little picture and filled it up. So you've got 1.07 project. You can complete that. I think you should maybe take a little break because your brain's probably tired. But then look at your note and finish this and turn it in so Mrs. Downey can grade it. You guys did fantastic today. Thank you for all the participation. All the vocab is not on the assignment. It's just in the lesson. Bye, everybody. Go ahead and log off. Take a little, get a little break. Take a little snack. Have a great day, everybody. Um, they were great. So if they start talking about Kentucky Fried Chicken, that's